If I would have um, thought, oh, no, I would have brought it. I accidentally it had two copies. But the one I have with me is my spongy stained the copy. Of love. And the other one is brand new copy. So, okay. if you um, want it, next time I see you, I'll pass it. Thank you very much. Like very welcome. Anthroposophy, for example, is the science of man. So, why wouldn't oh, this be no. the wisdom of love? Yeah, I got that. I got that thing. The one everybody so has. I said. It's a head cold. I don't know what everybody else has. Oh, it's really weak. <laughs> Not fun. Yeah. Okay. And cold medicine, perhaps. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. So much cold medicine. Okay. Well, I hear. I have sinus infections. I need like three different kinds of cold medicine. I take one of each four times a day. Does allergies have to clear it up at all? Uh, yeah, it, 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 it stop, it'll stop to sneeze you for a while. Aren't we? Yeah. Otherwise, I sneeze for a while. Aren't we hour. training ourselves to become really wise in love? Really bad. Because we can spot what's not love. We're learning stuff. to spot yeah, what's not love. And seeing through our beliefs about love. Yeah, you're still laying on it. Have a seat. Yeah, I like what you're doing, but uh, like seeing sick or not. That means hey, love has David, a content. Oh, I was going to say, oh. I don't know where you want to go. Without would give us a yes. Well, it goes back on itself. Oh, intimate as you like. That means that is coming too. Love must have a wisdom. <coughs> then it doesn't desire. Think again, it makes me think of that. I think again, I'll, then wisdom is a state of, in, of not desiring, but. Well, go ahead. How does that fall? I, I don't get how this wisdom implies not desiring. Well, it, it's a state. No, no. Is wisdom a state? What is wisdom? Yeah, that's a question. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. See, well, because, see, because in his no, thesis no. on in his thesis on love, <coughs> he ends up by saying it's, it unfolds as reality or truth okay. in the symposium, right? Yes or no? Do you know? Are you aware of that? Right. Otherwise, we would have to pull out the book and take a look. Mm -hmm. Sasha, Sasha. Okay. I put a message about bringing snacks. Looks like people got me, took me seriously. I put a message about bringing snacks. Here's cashews. Thank you. beautiful with the mind which alone can see it to give birth not to likenesses of virtue since he touches no likeness but to realities since he touches reality what does he do? gives birth to realities he's, he's not in touch with likeness yeah. the trouble with that is I like the translation mm -hmm. <laughs> but the word is truth <coughs> he touches truth. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
Okay. And this is he who, he's the but, philosopher? Yeah, yeah, but it's incomplete. Mm. Why do you shake your head and say yes? I mean, okay. Why? That is rather foolish of me to have said that, and here you accepted it. Well, how is it incomplete? Thank you. The end of it, there's an extra step beyond beauty. And when he's given birth to real virtue and brought it up. Keep that. Um, what did you have to do? Well, he has to bring it up. Raise it to something Both and bring it up. Right. Yeah. So it's incomplete. You have to do right. something else. Right. Uh, and brought it up. Will it not be granted him? Will it not be granted him to be the friend of God and immortal if any man ever is? Yeah. He who raised truth, cultivated it, will be the friend of God. Oh, the, the truth will be No. Oh. Will it not be granted him to be the friend of God? Yeah, you have to go before that. The question is whether there is something in addition being asserted other than if you read truth, is that the end? Or must there be something else that's needed to be done? You have to bring it up. Yeah, bring birth and bring it up, yeah. Right. So it's incomplete on the highest level. Mm -hmm. so, if the highest wanted, level. so if you wanted to call that beauty, it's insufficient. Since there's something else that's beyond it. Mm. Is that right? I don't know about beauty. Well, is that the subject of the discussion? I thought you just said it's true. The subject is true. That's what, it, that's what he calls it. Oh, he would, the whole thing is the a whole discussion beauty. on the nature of beauty, though. Okay. The question is, what do you see when you see beauty? I don't know what you see when you oh. see, but I see here, she says, finally, Socrates, love is not for the beautiful, as you think. So my question's about love, and you're going to beauty. So, is, so how does it fit in? It's good. good. You're saying that you don't grasp it. Mm -hmm. Right. But you need to start with what is the subject he's discussing here called whatever this is. Mm -hmm. So you have to see the preceding. If love subject. is the love now, if love is the love of him, okay, uh -huh. having this always. Oh, okay. What is the way men pursue it? Yeah. Look here. It, it, <laughs> okay. It, it takes a bit of. I see that. Well. Uh, so let me go to my third question then, well. and I'll read this. <laughs> Okay, to, to get the answer, you have to go, see, you're three pages away from where oh, that whole discussion is of okay. the transition. Okay. Right, take a look at that. But he should turn to the great ocean of things, and in contemplation of it, give birth to many beautiful and magnificent speeches and thoughts in the abundance of philosophy, until being strengthened and grown therein, he may and catch, catch one sight. sight of some one knowledge, yeah. the one science of this beauty now to be described. Okay, okay. then that's the description. Uh, okay. What's well, the description? What is he doing? Thanks. He's catching sight of um, knowledge and uh, of beauty. Yeah. And then can contemplate beautiful things. <coughs> okay. Well, That's the preceding stuff. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, that's good to see. Well, I'll, I'll read that. Okay. But then my third good. argument Go is that because it seems like in midwifery we are seeing through beliefs about what love is in our families. Not true. And as a result, we don't get seduced by previous once we see through those beliefs, they don't have the effect on us. And so, <coughs> then, <coughs> again, it seems like philosophy in that, and philosophical midwifery would then be the study of, the wisdom of love. Because we're seeing through images of love, at home. but we see more than that. So, that's, that's the yeah. okay, okay, I can see. Yeah, that's not a good. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. We, we have not reached any clarity, but we have reached... <laughs> no! Right, we have, have reached the point where it's important for you to make sure you understand that. Well, I don't have my position anymore. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's because, better. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go back to the... Right. And sharpen up my... <laughs> <laughs> or just drop it because I have the question now. Mm. But look here, you did raise a good point, so... Hmm. Uh, the question is whether and whether or not there is something in addition to family beliefs that one must seek through in midwifery. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And you're holding, I think, the position that. That's what, <laughs> that's what it is. I wonder whether or not you have to go and discover false beliefs which were not <laughs> in origin from your family or culture. Do you have reason to suspect? Yeah, yeah. What would be reason? Well, because there, there can be what are called uh, false beliefs about the nature of reality that <laughs> never picked up from any particular family or tradition. Oh, yeah. That's true. Right? Yeah, yeah, good. That, what did that do to you? <laughs> well, it's like... Yeah, that's a whole. Until you get through the family, you can't even begin to right, look right, at that right, right. that level. Good question. Where would those come from, Pierre? Where would those come from? Well, the question. <coughs> are just our lack of soul. Need some water. Yeah. Um, Say, I understand you have had some experience with some children. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah could sure. you go so far as to say there's a period where they are immature? Currently going through it. Huh? Currently going through it, yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? The pink one. Pink. What does it mean that they're <laughs> immature? Yeah, what is it? Mean? <laughs> it's purely pink. Well, you're pink. Straightforward, it means that they haven't come to full growth yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That they're in some kind of evolving process. Or unfolding. Yeah. Uh, or and particularly painful ones. <laughs> and, see, a pathologist can only come when you are immature. Okay. And if you take, it's the old question of the. Uh, whether philology uh, recapitulates ontology. 
old principle. I, what is the word philology? Well, essentially, does the human being from the moment of conception all the way through to the point of full maturity recapitulate the, the entire evolutionary process of all living things? Oh, okay. I, I, I got that question. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, immaturity is a stage that used to be current among all so-called human beings at one point. Mm -hmm. hmm. And therefore, they're living through it as they're going from adolescence to adult. Possible? I think so. Uh, yeah. Some of the things I see my children going through, yeah. uh, selfishness, uh, righteous, false righteousness. No, all of them. Uh, yeah. Uh, in addition to selfishness, like territorialism. Entitlement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when they do see that they have a mind, thinking that their mind is uh, tyranny, thinking yeah. that their mind is the only way. That's right. That's right. Okay. I was told by another teacher to stop talking to my children when they turned 12. <laughs> and to not talk to them again until they were 16. They want them to be and not stay it. Well, just to, well, not try to be reasonable or use logos with yeah. them, you know, like, and, because there's no, they just need to go through their stage, like, in that sense, like. Yeah, but in principle, they need guidance. Oh, no, yeah, I know that. It wasn't to not give them guidance, but to yeah. not try to relate to them anymore, yeah. like the way you had done before yeah. 12 or like so, do you after think 17. The, uh, so-called adult person is then reach the end of human development? Not I think it's like the beginning. Yeah. Like, uh, I had a discussion with my friend today, and she's 41, and she was like, I feel like some pieces of myself are coming together that are giving me a direction. And I was like, <laughs> you're freaking 41! <laughs> like, you're 41 and you're now coming to this place where you feel like yourself is coming together yeah. and now you can do something. Like, uh, yeah. and I, I appreciated her statement. I thought it was kind of. So, what do you think profound. might be the next stage of man's development? What would be the next stage? Um, acting on that capacity. Mm -hmm. Now that she's got herself together and knows herself, acting on that to give birth. Yeah. You know, like, I see that urge within her and within me. It's yeah. like. She now wants to produce something real and true and genuine yeah. that's going to have a lasting good effect on herself and others. Well, philosophy is merely the next stage of man's development. Well, giving for a generativity. Oh, generativity. And then, yeah. Have you heard of this guy, no, Jordan Peterson? Pardon? Have you heard of this guy, Jordan Peterson? <laughs> I'm not doing it again. Oh, there's this man that I've discovered his talks that lots of people are into. His name's Jordan Peterson. Yes, go ahead. And he, I haven't watched uh, too much of his stuff, but one of the things that keeps returning is uh, man's desire for meaning and how meaning is the foundation of our being. And he keeps speaking about the lack of meaning and seeking meaning in our culture as being the real downfall of what's going on in our culture right now. Mm. We're now seeing the need for it for the first time in our culture. Mm -hmm. This is a great wakening up. We're seeing the need for it. Mm -hmm. We never saw the need for it. Yeah, it's pulling people from outside of political and religious traditions. Yeah. Like they are doesn't matter if people are on the left or the right or what religious tradition they're a part of. It's like gravitating people towards this guy, towards this way of seeing. And people are um, reporting how much it's helping them develop and be happier as humans. So yeah, I was like, this is not news to us, to our group, <laughs> like that that philosophy is the next stage of human development. This is the first time, I think, in American history where we can identify the evangelical movement as un-American. 
as a premature right. expression of an earlier belief held by many people. Right. And we're seeing them as the loyal bond that keeps Trumpism alive. He's the last vestige. This is a, a resurgence. But we have to see it. You see, we've, we've allowed everyone to have their own opinion. Yeah, this guy is totally against postmodernism and okay. identity politics. He's okay. like, calls it BS and, yeah. and says the idea. He uses the word relativism. Yeah. I feel like, like this, these people should come have talks with us. Like, because while they... Well, they call out relativism. He's like, the idea that there's an infinite way of experiencing the world and seeing the world um, is true in one sense. It's also untrue, that there's not an infinite amount. There. There's only limited ways, and some ways are more beneficial and more destructive. And so it's uh, curious how they're calling into this whole movement, this intellectual movement of postmodernism and multiculturalism, and people are now gravitating towards that. And even though he is a Christian himself, he doesn't really pur purport those ideas in his talks. Could I ask a question I, at this point, because it ties back to an earlier stage of the discussion where you talked about the philology and ontology. And I meant to ask, but I was kind of waiting to see if anyone else did, whether you're talking about the fact that perhaps um, man becomes capable of using words and that they're logos and that therefore that's a point you have to get that get the person in that process rather than when they finished it because then they won't be open to an imposition of of a pathologos if they but if you take if you take part at a certain point in that formation you can form in them the pathologos and does that mean that what you're talking about in the evangelical movement that the evangelical are some in some form of primitive thought also just like you're at a, one is at a primitive state in maturation, so too evangelical thought is a primitive thought, and I, if so, what would you say, how would you, how would you characterize that, the primitive thought of the evangelicals? Because I'm not sure I follow, well, and then the conversation can proceed. I, but it is a primitive form. Be, in, in what way? Because it's not rational? Yes. Oh. Any other reason? That's the best one. Yeah, that's true. It's like clam. Isn't it almost yeah. like monkey clam? And, and and it's it's but what does that mean? And Just and blind and adherence and, essence, and that's where the flaw is? In essence, it's anti anti mind. <coughs> oh. Mm. Okay. I was anti -science. reading one of your works that it's not, talks about it's science. Mm -hmm. It's anti rational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Science just happens to be a certain form of rationality. That you can't have belief and rationality coexisting in the same being? I've never seen that. Right. It couldn't happen. And if you get someone to believe, then they will, be, they will fear the mind and... You, this is, I was just quoting and trying to bring back to my mind. Fear the mind and... Damn it. And it, because a mind is their enemy at that point because they left theirs behind when they accepted the pathologos or the belief in the case of the evangelicals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. See, when yeah. Bush, Bush made that great decision to open up key positions in the judiciary to graduates of a Christian university that produced... Christian lawyers, as they call them. Yeah. So he, he brought in over a hundred of evangelical Christian lawyers to key positions. And Trump is doing the same thing. He's pulling from those people, his people. They are his people. Not because he's Christian, but that's a way of thinking. And apparently, it's a, wonderful, and it's a wonderful life age. Life two other parts of this belief system. Like, this mm -hmm. is a wonderful age. We've never had it, an age where everyone is beginning to say to themselves, you know, we, we have to redefine what we mean by interrelations. I mean, we have to do something enormous. We have to say that uh, maybe we 
better respect women. I'm in favor. No, well, I'm, it's, it's a very big debate. <laughs> no, no, it's never, been, it's never been an issue. This is the first time it's ever been a real issue among all people. Like people are losing their jobs because of what they've done in the past. Because it was acceptable in the past. No one has the same problem as going on in every sports arena. Right, what our coach is doing, what our doctor is doing, what our priests are doing. But it's all valued. We're doing something really interesting. For past things that were accepted are now being rejected and they're carrying the burden of that past judgment as a basis for rejecting their present status. This is a totally amazing. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to say, oops, I'm so sorry I did that. <laughs> no. Like, so, uh, that doesn't work. I, I remember in my youth, you know, uh, the, there were ma I had magazine little notes about fraternities honoring the young men who were able to collect the panties of girls that they had seduced and at, at, at uh, frat parties. Mm -hmm. Hey, no thought of maybe they got them drunk first or mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't with their consent. None of that was ever mentioned. Mm -hmm. was, hey, this is what they do at frat houses. Mm -hmm. So like the rise of philosophy then comes along with the rise of justice yes. and the rise of uh, human yeah. vision. Hey, uh, people, are now asking, people are now asking new questions that they never asked before. And, one of the, and this, is the urge, this is the edge of the new one. Like, do people have the right to transform themselves? Mm. Oh. Mm. Male to female. Why is that important? We're on the verge where someone's going to say, you know what, we can uh, we can add a little uh, this or that to the human brain and uh, make Superman. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's an ethical issue, but it's going to be decided on this other issue. Hmm. Where is your freedom to change yourself? Hmm. Hmm. What? They take Confucius. The whole system of Confucianism is that what you are is sacred, and every hair on your head is sacred, and you never even want to give up one hair off your head, hmm. because that may disfigure you in some way. Wow. And you're not staying the way you should be continuously emerging from that, and that's supposed to be central to the family. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. No, no. So it raises the question even more so about what is the self. Yeah, and how. It's, it's never been raised. You know, like, I've even heard some people say that, that, that the word is even rejected in some translations. <laughs> or just valued Don't laugh out at by me. I did hear spiritualists. it. I, I, yes, I, me, I have too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it goes along with a corresponding challenge of the pathologos then in our philology versus ontology talk yeah. because at some point we gave we give up ourselves for our family vision and for our role. No. No, no. We didn't give it up because that's conscious. Oh, okay. Uh, believe? <laughs> we didn't Ooh. give it up. What was the second? Because that's conscious. Hmm. Ah. I'll take a better word. Different version well, of ourselves? Yeah. Just a different, put it on hold, well, Barbara, different you said version, just grow it. differently. Yeah. We just experience different parts of ourselves during that time. Oh. Turned what? off. Okay. Like, aren't you having to treat your children differently? My children? Yeah. Than when I grew up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you make of that difference? It's very challenging because at the one time I'm, still asleep to many of the ways that I was raised <laughs> and, and and like discovering like what my parents did to me now as a parent even more so than when I started philosophy. Oh.
gods are shouting in the heavens. Right, focus the point. Well, like when I started studying midwifery and philosophy with this group, I saw a certain type of problem that mm-hmm. arose. And then when I became a parent, there was a whole other set that I had, wasn't even aware of that are now coming to mind. So to some extent, I'm still waking up. But in another way, I've raised my children to have their own minds. And I've raised them to speak and to share them. And it is very hard to run a family that's not authoritarian. Because <laughs> like, they, they will, they will not buy authority. They will not like just do something because I asked them or told them. And so there's a whole other set of problems that go along with that, like how to have a community and and have them see goodness that's not put upon them by shame or like a must or yeah. a to. Like how to find a balance. Yeah. yeah, my own daughter said, you raised me to have my own mind, yeah. and now you don't like it when I use it against you. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, no, just use it with how, me. How, how is it affecting your razor? Come on. Uh, I find that I have to have, a, I have a balance with my kids, and uh, but Was it different from the one you were raised oh, with? Oh, completely. So, like, what's happening? It would be that mirror image of, like, just, well, actually, the opposite. It's complete opposite, actually. Yeah. We decided when we got married that we were going to raise them differently and not only did we say it but we acted on it and we did do it completely differently I went to a marriage about a month ago and I asked people getting married I did want to ask them directly because I wanted to see about the force of the question I had in the back of my mind but I asked them yeah, how do they choose this place and uh how much thought did they give it? Who got involved? They never used the word church in the whole discussion. Hmm. Was it hey, other church? I don't. E- I don't even think they even went nearby one. Hmm. Neither to walk by nor to genuflect hmm. if they went to mm-hmm. okay. or by it. Hmm. But that's a hell of a difference. Mm-hmm. We got married at the courthouse. We, yeah. He asked, <laughs> yeah. well, our story's a little different. I asked him to go marry me at the courthouse. I said, let's do it now. Well, I proposed to her, but then one day she woke up and said, I want to get married. I said, yeah, me too. And she says, no, today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very <laughs> smart person. You know, something, I feel it, and I do it. I'm a very take action kind of guy. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if I know something, I know it in my heart, and I want it, I do it. Yeah, but see, that's, that's, a, that's a new age. This is a new age. We're in a new age. <laughs> mm-hmm. That needs direction, though. Yeah. You know, Without direction, it, you said they, they still need guidance. Sorry, Don. No, no, I'm sorry. No, please, go ahead. Um, to answer the question, well, not answer, but to help, maybe, what did it for me was the hypocrisy of seeing my parents tell me or people tell me what to do and then they go around and do exactly what they tell me not to do. And I hated that. And so what I tried to do, my grandfather was a big influence on me. He showed, he he reminds me of you a lot. Um, And I love him dearly. But he was my model. And I knew at a young age I had to have a good model. So I followed his model. Then I met the guy that taught me how to do tile. He was another guy that showed me. And what he showed me, he did. And so I just got that in my mind. Of, to be an example of what you want. And with that, they gain respect for you. And they don't want to let you down. I have six children, and we're having problems with our 18-year-old. Well, he's going to be 18 very soon. And I tell him, I say, this is what I want. I want to take care of you. I want you to go to college, get your AA, and if you want to join the military, that's up to you. But you'll have your, your education, go into the military, you could possibly be a, a, an officer. Because he has, we adopted him at six. We had him in our house since five. But uh, he, he has problems with uh, women. And so me and Marie had a 
major issue. He he was the only at that time he was we always got along like we do now. But he got in the middle of it. Mm. And we were at each other because I felt she was being too aggressive and I wanted to be more passive. And uh, we finally got through it. It was hard. We got through it and through that problem my eyes opened that I have to be compassionate to her. And the Pierre, the first dream I ever did was focus on the woman. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. Like I always say, okay. <laughs> and I focused on her, and, and she's here with me now. Mm -hmm. And it's by leading by example. Mm -hmm. I think that's really powerful because, like, my, I'll tell my children, like, I want you to do this, I want you to that. And my son's like, it's always what you want. <laughs> it's always what you want. And I was like, well, that's a language thing. And I think more so they are looking for somebody to inspire them. Like, rather than to, to be teach and a tell and an authority. Mm -hmm. Like, the more I actually pursue the things I want to do, the better I feel. <laughs> like, the, the less I try to parent, I guess, in one sense, in one way. Like, be them. Like, the more I try to just become my fullest self, and the more they're responsive to me. It's like an inverse thing. Like... Mm. That's what I try to do. I try to instill that in my kids. And when I was growing up, I didn't know what love was or how to be treated. But I knew... I, I that knew, wasn't it. I knew what... It's like talking about the one. You can't say what it is, you know. But you know... You can say what it is, you know, when you're talking about certain things. And I just was like, I know what love isn't. So I got to go out there and find out what is it. What What is it that I want? What do I want out of life? And I went out there and I just did the best I could and knew how I wanted to raise my kids, how I didn't want to raise my kids for sure. Mm -hmm. And then went out there and we did it together. And we... We're like-minded though from the start. We're like-minded from nice. the start, which helped a lot. So being on mm -hmm. the same page... We were and raised in the same sure type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Similar. She had it worse than I did. Well, I mean, that doesn't matter, but it, who's worse? <laughs> but the point being that we stayed together on that and treated them with respect and asked them to treat us like. And so far, so good as far as that goes. And she's the one with the balls in the family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't think it's we that saw anyone should one ever treat anyone now. without respect and kindness. So when they do that, I just say, you know, like my my eight-year-old, for example. I made her. I gave her a hot pocket instead of what she wanted for her lunch, and she treated me like Fred before we came here because she got a hot pocket, but you know those pizza pockets. Mm -hmm. And uh, then she didn't know what it was. She didn't know what it was because she had never had one. She's used to getting a big old lunch because they don't have a cafeteria after school. It's, anyway, so then she called me after we got here and apologized. She said it was the greatest thing she had. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom, that I treated you so badly. And she, you know, Juliana, she's eight. She says, I'm sorry I treated you so badly. That was delicious. Mm -hmm. It was so good, and I shouldn't have treated you that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you kind of leave it in their court, because I had also told her, I'm going to be gone for the week, and I'm not going to see you, and I don't want to leave it this way. I know you're upset, but I love you. Have a great day. Be the best you can be. And I left it at that and gave her time to think about it, gave it time for her to leave it in her court, try her food, it. and she did, and she came back to me. So that's how I try to be with it. Strange, is it? No emotion, like, Ugh, I can't believe you're acting like that. Stop being a brat. Yeah, don't or, you know, none there's of that. Thing. There's no reason for me to react that way. None. I just treat her with love and kindness and came back to me. Try to, you know. Well, I do, but what I mean is yeah. the way it works for yeah. other people. So, These are big changes from your own past. Yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. Right? Yes, yes. I know what didn't work for me. Yeah. I would never want to treat, have, treat yeah. someone that way. Yeah. Like a federal judge yesterday in San Francisco said that from this point on, according to his decision, that the police in San Francisco and California, and by extension to all the of our United States is, do not have to follow the rules of ICE, the immigration mm -hmm. authorities. And if they do follow them and happen to jail and incarcerate people, etc., they're liable. Oh, oh great. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what does this mean? Like, what the hell is this? What is all this immigration stuff? What is the real issue behind it? 
color brown. I think it's part of uh, it's part of the fourth hypothesis. It's uh, every belief system, whether it's religious or political, has its sign or symbol. Right? <coughs> we, um, mm -hmm. I forget what the Greek word for it was that we came across. It has its um, the name for its crusade, whether it's the whether it's Jihad or the Crusades or Keep America Great, they all have their name. And they all have their, what they have in common also is their enemy. For Jews, it's the Goy. For Christians, it's the Great Unwashed. For Muslims, it's uh, infidels. And for Trump, it's... Uh, Anybody. Who no, it's immigrants. Non-whites. Right? And every belief system, by, by its nature, has... Uh, creates outsiders. That's that's its function. Those outsiders have to have a name. But this rule is saying outsiders have rights. Mm. That's right. Well, that's oh, yeah. the Constitution for you. Yeah. <laughs> they do have rights. Right. Well, Jen and I went to. And, the, and the, this is a revolution going on in American society. Well, there's so much going on at the state levels now that uh, where they're bucking the federal, the feds. It's uh, people are even talking about yeah. the possibility of breaking up the United States into regions now because uh, what states want to do, they're just hamstrung by the federal levels, and it, you're seeing it with Trump. Uh, so many cities now want to start. Uh, there are measures in over 13 states now that go back to public banking instead of having private bankers return banks to the people. As it used to be, every state and commonwealth in this in the, in the nation here used to have private public banks, mm -hmm. and one by one they all got pushed out by the private bankers. Well, at local levels, people are doing all kinds of amazing yeah. things, but this we have to do it apparently without without the feds. Yeah. But this is like this yeah. is what's going on, yeah. and therefore we're in the middle of the magnificent changes and challenges for change. I mean, uh, Jed and I just went to an immigration um, talk at the Jewish Community Center in Long Beach uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they had a number of experts and people in the field, and the stories that came out of this, the, these, it was several people who talked, um, pro bono lawyers and advocacy groups and so forth, and uh, what's happening in Orange County, for instance, alone is just appalling. They're taking the same people who are have been thrown in jail because they are here for uh, asylum from their countries. Uh, they're putting them in the same area of people who have uh, committed felonies and so forth. And they're putting everybody in shackles, um, like old school shackles walking around with them, right? Um, telling people, oh, if you're from El Salvador or Guatemala or whatever you're from, uh, you, you only have 60 days to get all the paperwork together that you need. And everybody, every lawyer knows that you're talking about a country that's there's no way you're going to get the paperwork in time mm -hmm. back, and everybody knows this. And all the kinds of rules that they're setting up, that most of which is invisible to the majority of the American citizenry right now. And it's all unconstitutional. Terribly. Yeah, they're making right. up their own rules. The path to citizenship that. now, according to Trump, in order to be a DACA on path of citizenship, you cannot be in any legal trouble for 12 years, which is going to be a setup, you have to make at least 260% of the uh, poverty level. That has to be, and you can <laughs> never previously in America been on any government assistance because right. that would make you independent. So you have yes. all this stuff stacked up against you. See, the Christian right is, in the, is, is shrinking. And what they mm -hmm. see is that there's a browning of America. And, and th that's what they're afraid of. It's not that uh, this immigrant or that immigrant. It's that America is turning a different color. And, and so uh, they're going to make it impossible. Yeah, but you see, that, what, what's so wonderful about that mm -hmm. is that a sufficient number of people are seeing how stupid that yeah. is yeah. and unjust that is. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to, that's not going to survive in one year. If the political direction is going in the way in which it appears to be going, it's also, which is democratic takeover of the country. Uh, I, I, Barbara, you know, said that the Christian right is embracing this whole abuse thing. You know that it's okay now 
um, uh, for the top the top officials in the White House. Both both of those secretaries are wife abusers. Uh, Stephen Miller and and what's his name? Porter. Uh, and Porter, the other guy. Uh, Stephen Miller's secretary and the the, uh, the general counsel. I mean the the. The white, what's that general's name? Kelly. Kelly. Oh. Both of their secretaries, um, and so wife abuse is okay, and um, and uh, sexual abuse is okay. No, yeah. they've said that it's not okay, but because of the other agendas that we can get accomplished with with Trump in office, we're going to ignore the illegality of his administration. So, and it goes back to that question that a path of logos can push justice aside. That, that it, it, justice and the path of logos are, 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 are group conscious like that, uh, can ignore the idea of justice. Yeah, but we want to see that before it was hidden. It's becoming clear, yeah. I think. Now it's becoming clear. Now there can be an action against it. Yeah. yeah. And that action against it is going to remove them. They're not going to be able to survive in one year. All of these so-called rules are all dead in the water. Uh -huh. it, it must be fascinating <coughs> for you to see this change in awareness. Since, I mean, you've lived longer than anyone, anyone here. So it's well, I'm seeing it in my lifetime, too. It's right. Any woman, yeah. <laughs> we've all been abused, right? So it's like interesting to see women standing up and or yeah. and coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the the whole idea that yeah that is platonic. Yes. What's invalidated? Mm -hmm. The only Absolutely. difference between men and women, uh -huh. right, is that one gives birth, the other does not. But in terms of the mind, there's no difference. Now, what's, what, is, what is that going to do to you? Maybe I'll lose sight of my gender. And become? Become, become just mine. Better. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Philosopher. Better. Uh, better? <laughs> Way better. Uber mind. Better. Superwoman! <laughs> What's better than Super one? Being yourself. So that's that's what it is, isn't it? It's uh, getting rid of the all the kind of masks mm -hmm. that society puts on women and men. On oh, anybody. Yeah, identity yeah. politics. I was Identi at, group identity. I, w yeah. I was at a Black History Month thing at school, and they had this big party or for everybody, and there was a reverend who gave his great speech. Everyone was just totally quiet. And I'm sitting there, and I look around the room, and he said, well, we're going to eat now. And so he says, the, the reservation tables in front were going to get up, and they were, they had the opportunity to go first. To, to do what? To go eat. Oh. What do you mean reservation, like the guest of honor or something? Yeah, like the guest of honor. Yeah. So they had the guest of honors, and he said, well, we'll just do the, the people in the front three tables, and you can go line up. And I just suddenly, out of nowhere, said, Ah, oh, why can't we go? <laughs> I mean, it was like total silence, and it was breaking the mold of this church image mm. that uh, we have to do what you want. If it, that doesn't make sense. Why can't you do other ways? Anyway, it created a stir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be part of that church, I can tell. No? Right. It was at school, though. Are you looking? This was at school, though? <laughs> at school, this happened? Yeah. My question is, if, if the next development of mankind is into philosophy, then 
where's the philosophy going to come from? Because, like, we have 11 people here. Uh, I have a philosophy group on campus. At most, like, 10 to 15 people show up. Mm -hmm. I ran a uh, philosophical professional development at school, and the table for the ASL, like, t learn some sign language for your kids, was, like, packed and overflowed, and I had, like, six to eight people in my group. And so it's like, there's, there's, no, there's no avenue for it to come up, or tradition, or, like, people are longing for it, and they, they need guidance, but... Like where where does it arise from? Because it doesn't arise arise from the people's just like cosmic consciousness, collective consciousness, like waking people up. Like where do you think it goes? Well, you know, there's nothing there. There is nothing more superficial than education. Ah. Mm. That's for sure. good statement, sir. <laughs> you know, I mean, just <clears throat> more superficial than education. Well, Pierre, you said something last night more expensive. Uh, about mm. pointing out that there's a possibility for growth. No. And I kind of took issue with that. I think there's a mandate for growth and that w that's not part of our society and that because there's not a mandate for growth, um, in fact, there's even the option of not wanting to grow, which should be um, disqualify you from participating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and unless, you know, humanity realizes that they, they have the ability to, to become themselves in the purest and, and, and most un, unimpeded way, uh, and, that's, and that's a mandate, um, you're going to have groups of people sitting around with all these different approaches to it. Some people, it's okay not to grow, I'm going to be disruptive. I'm going to keep growth from happening. Uh, this is the classroom I'm thinking about. Some people are going to want to grow, and they're going to sit there quietly waiting for a peaceful moment, occasionally when they can get an insight, because we don't have a mandate for growth. Well, we don't have a mandate yet, because it, isn't art it hasn't been articulated. Well, it has to be articulated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just, it just kind of hit me last night. I was like, I made a note on my phone as I got to home. I said, Pierre said that. No, it's, it's worse than that. It's not a possibility of growth. Um, going back to Josh's question, where is it going to come from? It has to be um, uh, a part of the Constitution. You will improve yourself to be a member of this society. A new amendment. A new amendment. Well, they use the word growth, but it's always about economies. They, yeah. they don't use bettering yourself as your ability to produce and mm -hmm. contribute and, and, and gain. So the, I think the idea has of, of improving or benefiting the people. That'd be so cool. I think people would come. not be bored by education. You know, you wouldn't have the complete boredom that happens in classrooms through lack of anything <coughs> meaningful if there were a <coughs> mandate that lessons be directed towards seeing yourself, knowing yourself, and yeah. becoming your true self. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the country in Asia? Is it Nepal or one of these? Pardon? Like, that a few years ago was in the news for introducing a national statistic they had on gross domestic happiness. Oh, Bhutan. That's Bhutan. No. I think that's just only one step away from growth because as soon as you measure that. That's an invitation to creativity, joy, and meaning, understanding. Gross domestic excellence. Really? Interesting. They, no, they, gross they, domestic excellence. They're interested wisdom. in measuring it. And they're, 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 they it. said, forget all the economic statistics. That's what we really want to know. How about like that? How happy is everybody? How about that Michael Moore movie? I like that. Where Should We Invade Next? He showed Finland, and the students are only in school for about 20 minutes a day. And the rest, the they're out because the faculty believes they should be out discovering imagination. Yeah. And, Which is and they have and the highest college, I don't know, they have a really high yeah. Yeah. success rate. They used to go with our, with our model, testing, 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 mm -hmm. and then they, they abandoned, dropped it all, and they're still like the number two, number one or number two in the world for all those other measures anyway. Right. And actually, by the way, I just have to throw in, you guys have heard me talk about Sudbury 
Sudbury Valley schools exist in Europe and in the United States. There's a new one here starting in Orange County called the Democratic, no, the Open School, they renamed it. And it follows that Finnish model. And what's interesting about the Open School is uh, basically their, their model <coughs> is anything that you're interested in, you want to mess around, mess around. You want to do nothing, do nothing. Well, what they find the kids do is they do it when they first get there. They mess around for a while. And then after a while they go, I'm tired of messing around. I want to get into something. Mm -hmm. And they get into music. They start teams. One of them decides he wants to go to medical school, so he's going to study math. I mean, every they start doing stuff after a while. And um, the interesting thing about Sudbury Valley model is that everybody has one vote, including kindergartners. Everybody, janitors, everybody has a single vote. Totally democratic. How do we want to run things? You see, I, I take a different view. I, uh, <laughs> Hobbit just likes to see a few small things come into education. Mm -hmm. Right. But we don't name a few. Yeah. Just a few. High school, you know, when you're when the, by the uh, entering high school, everybody has to start studying dreams. Mm. Mm. See, that's wow. about Lily. That's Lily's age, right? She's 16. She's ninth grade, huh? Oh, I have another one for you, Pierre, if you're going to go in that direction. Um, in the last 30 years, there's been a, pl a whole bunch of new books that have come out on um, out-of-body experience and reteaching adults how to get out of the body. Mm. Uh, but they say that kids uh, are, it's much easier to remind them. They're, they're still very open. Mm -hmm. What if starting from kindergarten, um, out of body experiences are part of the education and you keep that going? Hmm. Can you funny. imagine the implications for society when people realize that they're not their body? One will go with the other. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so in dream study, Pierre, why have you changed? You have changed radically in, in, in the last year at least and maybe longer in your in your work with dreams. It used to be much more philosophical midwifery. Getting in, digging oh, yeah. for past experiences, uh, looking at the blocks, and almost every dream you do for the last year has been to go for the high point and point to the moment of clarity. And like there were two dreams last night that had a whole lot of implications that came from not doing that, which might have been interesting to explore. Josh is more so. It, it brought out more of his his pathologos, and and we didn't get it. We talked a little about it afterwards. But like with with Lily's dream, it was almost prophetic. Um, if you don't listen to, if you don't get the answer, time's gonna pass, and you're gonna end up being a useless old lady. You're, it was it was like there was her whole life in front of her, and um, and it had echoes of Medusa, who you couldn't look at except through a mirror, yeah. otherwise you'd turn to stone. And that's interesting too. I yeah. didn't see that. But 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 you're not. So are are you encouraging dream work now to just show people's excellence <coughs> and no longer? I mean, the fact that we all have excellence in our dream. Um, the last two dreams I've had with you is like, where's the problem? Oh, fucking no problem. Okay, so I'm seeing okay. <laughs> you know, I was kind of hoping to have this big breakthrough. No, I'm doing fine. Uh, I need a breakthrough, by the way. Um, but uh, is that where you think dream work should be going now to um, trying to find the peak experiences? Well, I think your, your uh, opening remark was true, which is that I have strange. Yeah. Because uh, I was, uh, I went to see a doctor some years ago, and he said, um, "You got cancer, kid." Hmm. I said, "Really?" I, I felt fine. He said, "Yeah, well, that's a problem." That's a problem. Yeah. He said, "By the way, it's rather huge." I said, "I don't see it." Is you don't see it because it's in your butt. You can't turn around and see your own <laughs> butt. <laughs> and I thought this doctor was very insightful. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he looked at his butt. 
So it turned out, of course, that uh, they took three and a half pounds out of uh, my butt. But I said to myself, Pierre, why are you having, why are you having cancer? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're living your life the way you're living, but well, there's, there's something you're missing. And you better take a look at it, otherwise you're going to go back to what you were before, being just as ignorant about something. Or maybe there is no rationality to disease and cancer. Mm. <coughs> so, uh, a certain period took place. And uh, I said, oh, Uh, I'm hiding. Hmm. I'm using books and literature and philosophy, different kinds of philosophy, Eastern, Western. And I'm not saying what I think. I'm showing what's there. Hmm. So I said, you know, uh, why don't you stop that shit, Pierre? That was pretty good advice. Hmm. Yeah, look at you still kicking. So, uh, I just decided to then start writing. Before that, I did very little writing, except one mm. piece of work, which I kept as a kind of journal. You had to get off your butt and get going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened. Okay. What was the piece and of work you were keeping as a journal? Pardon me? What was the piece of work you were keeping as a journal? Uh, return to the Gods. Mm -hmm. So what did you see in that that led to a transformation in the dream work? Well, you see, up to that point, I was saying, look here, there's a definite method, uh, and I would view it uh, in terms of looking at the high points and low points in order to, to understand it in terms of Pathologos. Pathologos. Okay, yeah. And I said, hey, look, Pierre, why don't you stop this trip? And uh, why don't you turn around and, and put it the other way around? That in every dream there's a high and a low. Why don't you start going for the high as you should do? The logos. Yeah, the logos rather than the pathologos. Turning it over. Which, uh, which See, I don't know, some time ago, when I used to do it, I used to, you know, identify all the lows and, and do it very systematically. And, mm -hmm. but, uh, it would take four hours. Yeah. Matter of fact, we used to do it <laughs> from 8 o'clock at night until, late, until 10 o'clock in the next morning. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right? Much like a Grateful Dead concert. But it was always the same. It was usually the same thing, which is how to understand them all in terms of the pathologos. And that was kind of hiding. So I said, uh-uh. I like your attitude. Well, it seems to me like there's an implication. And you can always make the offer when there's an evident pathologos that people could explore it if it continues to block them, mm -hmm. right? Like, like if, uh, say on, we're concerned about the states of mind in the beginning or the states of mind in the mm -hmm. end, he could, he could take those as a problem if they blocked him mm -hmm. and his vision, right? As, as you could, mm -hmm. right? But, and you say so often, but not in every dream, if you want to explore this pathologos, you can, and either now in the moment or or later, right? So it doesn't seem to me like that's impossible. Oh, it's on, on the same possible. Or, well... <laughs> the possibility remains. No. And it seems to me that if you don't have, if you, like, Seon might say, hmm, wow, yeah, that's a great state to be in. Huh, I wake up like that. I could watch what happens to me during the day. Or see if it blocks me when I try to do my art. You know, and if it does, if I can't get past it, hey, I know I can go, there's someone I can talk to, right? So it seems to me that it might even allow people, we used to say that the person has to be aware that they have a problem. They have to want to bring it to midwifery, not someone else saying, oh, 
I can see you're in a problem. You should really go and talk to Pierre, boy. Rather than if they don't explore that problem and they see it manifesting, that might in fact serve as a spur to see the roots of it, mm -hmm. why they're still attached to it, given they've had like a mind-blowingly <coughs> wonderful experience. But what do you think of his answer? Well, it explains the transformation. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see about um, how do you see focusing on the high point as a contribution to the person's state of mind? Do you see that as something that, I mean, the challenge is there for them to cultivate that. You well, rarely encourage that. Well, see, it also brought with it uh, a direction which is like, <coughs> uh, right, I now ask people, where's the key point? Mm -hmm. I never did that before. Uh-huh, that's true. I say, come on, let's train our mind to look for the key point. Yeah, Gene and Barbara could go right to them. I saw that last night. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a lucky shot last night. And the oh, grab <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, I can't usually, some of lot of dreams like, the dream. Or the problem. Well, yeah, two pages. Sometimes, 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 sometimes It makes me think, actually, Pierre, about what Barbara brought up last night, which is how dreams make a, bring us mm -hmm. to back to the self and the self, being able to say the self is healthy. So by getting them to participate in the logos, that's their live question. That's their live direction. That's their live telos. That's their live destiny. That's their vitality. And so by you coming back to that, it healed you. By getting other people into that, it brings them back to their healing. And it makes them alive. Like when I feel like I'm participating in my destiny, I, I, I actually feel alive. And like, like I can have some power and do something. Whereas when I'm constantly trying to think about my problems or my pathologos, it's kind of a dead state. Like, not that it's it's a part of me that does need to die, metaphorically in one sense, but it's not the same as being like in a state of wonder and not and and discovery. See, what's peculiar about uh, whether you want to call it Western civilization or Eastern doesn't matter, but. Uh, <coughs> Each age had a golden age. Chinese, Japanese, right? It's golden age. The Hellenic age is unique. It had a logos. And it was squashed. And what we're really doing is recovering and finding the need to reestablish ourselves in the Hellenic age. I think that's the whole drama going on right now in yeah. history. When you, when you say that they had a, a logos in the Hellenic age, what do you mean exactly? What is it that they had? Uh, uh, a, willing, a willingness to engage in the mind without restrictions to explore it while exploring it. Is it just a willingness or a specific willingness, kind of way of going about it? Well, that came with it. You have to first have a willingness to explore something and then discover the way to do it. There was also a mandate, know thyself. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was also, you know, it was, that was worked in. Yeah, like I had a discussion in Arizona with a guy, and uh, he's a, he was, uh, uh, but brought up as a Roman Catholic, and went through all the Catholic schools and universities, and he said, uh, it doesn't make any difference if you have this idea of self or not, it's still, they're all objects of faith, you have to start believing it. I said, that's you're fooling yourself. You don't have to believe in the self. There's no need to believe. I want to say it's because you can have a direct experience of it, 
But what, how would you how would you propose the alternative? Whatever you are, you know, in terms of your experience, whatever you want to call with the watcher, whatever whatever is going on in consciousness, see, you know, our culture. Our present culture stops with the word consciousness and all the foolishness because that's an absurd idea. Well, it's awareness. Same thing. Look, it's absurd. Awareness is no different than consciousness. I agree. So the guy go for it in Arizona? Okay, okay you took me. Uh, you, uh, I have to answer what you were, where you were going, otherwise you're not going to follow us. Oh, okay. Ness, the end of the word ness presupposes a subject. Uh huh. So when someone says consciousness as an ultimate term, it already presupposes a subject which they don't know. It's true. Same thing with awareness. Yeah. So going back with the idea of self, I said, mm -hmm. look here, whatever it is people are, whatever that is, they don't see it in any of their sense experiences. You can't see the self among the objects around the table. You, right? you can't hear it, it doesn't have a sound. But there is a presence. You don't have to believe in it. It's foolish to believe in it. <laughs> Therefore there's no need for belief in the idea of the self. Well, now you have to have, have the question, well, wait a minute, if that's the case, is there some way of getting a better view of it? There's a, there's a new phrase out. It's a one word. Yeah. Woke. Yeah. <laughs> Woke. And I'm, I'm curious to see how that develops in the next couple of weeks, because it's one of those, you know, three or four week things. But uh, the phrase, you woke, yeah. you that woke, com that, comes that would out be of the an same interesting up. idea. Yeah. To the zone. Yeah. Uh -huh. Zone and woke, yeah. See, but it isn't sophisticated enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it needs. It, I'm, I'm hoping to see it develop. Yeah. So, Pierre, you, you're yeah. rejecting like oh, when somebody says, "Hey, hey, kid, believe in yourself." Because when I've used this phrase before, but what that really means is trust your own judgment, not, not literally to believe in your. Like, what was that exactly? What does that even mean? That's right. But what, I, what it really means is, hey, you made a judgment. What are you going to do with it? Then you might want to get into, is it a real yeah. judgment or not, but that's something else. Yeah, because now you have a mystery. Right. Yeah. And if you have a mystery, you're not going to go to war. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking along the same thing here. Too busy. Uh, that, that word. Uh, <laughs> what was the word again? Sorry. Woke? Woke. Not woke. This is word. Well, well there is... Believe that's a good in yourself, one, believe, that's right, but okay. it's, a, it's so really more trust your own judgment is what that means. So. Right, so I was thinking of like, you know, all these years I've grown up, people say, follow your dreams, I don't even know what the hell that means. Until here, we start to break things down in dreams to analyze it, and maybe it comes down to believing yourself, And but, but the dream is, is so vague that people might even just say daydreaming, right? Like, oh, I'm daydreaming. I want to, say, be a teacher or be an astronaut or something. But it, it's so vague to me before, but until we, this group breaks it down. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm thinking to add, but to, I was reflecting on what you were asking Pierre regarding that he's changed his direction and what, what I've noticed in myself and observed in others, um, to look towards the highest point in the dream. And for him to outline it and to pull it out and describe it in great depth many, many times. And I saw that happen a couple of times with you. And it's almost like, um, for me, it was almost like I couldn't believe that that was happening and that's possible. So it puts me in a position or a state of mind where, <clears throat> yeah, I, that is true. It's almost like forcing me to see that that state of mind is possible. And what blocks me from that 
is a good question, but just to be able to be able to do that and stay with it and talk about the different words that are attached to it and uncover it gives validity to more so to that state of mind. And obviously what blocks it, it <coughs> becomes a mystery. Like what is it that why is it that I can't? Or I then begin to recognize and I notice in my daily life more that state of mind and I can maybe stay there longer or appreciate it or recognize it. Not to say that there isn't blocks that go along with it, but it, I have more logos to it, mm -hmm. and I'm able to talk about it in myself when it occurs. And I know that people are in it, talking about it. There's a lot of words that are describing it. And I think, yeah, that's similar to some of the things that I've experienced. Kind of settling into yourself. Yeah, could be. Yeah, I've, or, I've fired... A music teacher and a therapist this week. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's, wow. it's like they're, they're just phoning it in. I've got more going on than than I can get from them. Mm. You know, it's like oh, well, I, I I'm not doing it. You know, I'm not getting anything accomplished. But at least I know that I don't need the therapist to tell me that anymore. Good <laughs> 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 for you. So, but I your just, dreams uh, have told you they're damn expensive. Yeah. Last night I had a talk with Jeff came by and he said, um, I got a question for you. <clears throat> so let me give it to you. He said, We have a bunch of stuff now up on the web. He said, What would you imagine might be the total number of hits that are taking place on our NS sites? I don't know, but I think there's been a tremendous increase. All right, come up with a number. What do you think? Hits every day? I'd like to say uh, there well, total, total. total. I'd like to say there's a million. Uh, per day or per week? or uh, We're talking about the archive only. Is yeah, what time span are we Over speaking? the last two years. Total, two years. Total two years. over the last two years. Two years. Two years. It's it's close to a million. To no, we're not hit. talking total number of hits. We're just, you know how when you go to the archive, there's blocks for each item? Those yeah. are called items. Oh, I see. How many times has someone visited at unique times, not repeated, but just unique times has have people hit? How many times the total items have been hit uniquely? So if I, if I visit one recorded three times, it's only counted as one visit. Mm -hmm. It's still me, right? So two well, years, that's 720 over two, days. Over two years, yeah, we're up to 630-some items right now. Okay. Over the last two years, how many times has those total number of items been visited uniquely? 22 million five hundred. I'd say 70,000. I said 2,000. 70,000 to So you need a passcode to well, see that. No, you can see it on the home page. You can see it on the home page. <laughs> Good for you. Just click I'm about on it. What's the answer? 2,000. 220,000. No, 20, no it can't be. 40,000 downloads. Wow. 40,000 oh, wow. downloads. That's good. Yeah, so when oh. you, I mean, because when you go to an item, you have to assume the person's... Some people are, some people aren't. How many times are they hitting the donate button? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should learn how to do Whatever you, whatever you give two. away free, no one wants. Uh -huh. Well, and, and I want to just uh, <laughs> pass it back to Pierre with the point he was going to make, but not without a footnote. Lots of videos, lots of audios from generations of NS, right, going back to uh, yeah. the 80s and then the 90s and then the PRS videos from Julie and then... Uh, the iterations of videos from the Women's Club in Huntington Beach. You can see the group going through different generations of stuff. Some of us have been here quite a while. Um, uh, veterans. But when you look at all of them, you see that I see the numbers going up just gradually. We're not talking Yahoo or Amazon level millions of things, but I see the numbers growing up. And, it'll, and any of us can do this. You can see a little number under each item mm -hmm. to check how many times that item has been viewed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Guess which items are now getting, just on average, the highest views? Deities as a class. The, the self The, the, the philosophical research society. Oh, this is better. Any other guesses? The midwifery. The things. dreams? The dreams. The dreams. All dreams. good guesses. How many? The ones, okay, I'll tell you in a second. The ones that I'm going to tell you yeah, started out at around 8 or 10. Mm -hmm. When they moved up, there was a, a while we were getting 25 to 30. A day? Now they're up to, no, no, just total views of each item. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Before okay. it sort of 
peaks and sort of levels out for a while. Oh, okay. Before it peaks and levels out, it, and now we're up to 60 per item. Wow. On average, the last few. Of all things, mm -hmm. it's the Parmenides audio. Really? Wow. No because I can't make it. Wow, that's amazing. No, because <laughs> they're yes. audio. Yes. The, the, Audios? They're audios only, and they're the hardest to <laughs> stop right? They're Those audio. are the ones. You know, um, audio wow. is pure. It's really powerful, the audio. Mm -hmm. I see that when I watch Democracy Now. If I don't, if I just watch it, I get caught up in what I'm seeing, and I, mm -hmm. I don't listen then. Yeah, but... But that's, uh, yes, okay, so, and I've always been a fan of audio, and if anybody wants to take over camera, I'll go for it, because I always preferred it over doing the video, but I want to focus not so much on the media format, but on the content. It's very difficult to listen to a Parmenides discussion and follow it. We all know that when we do it. Sure. <laughs> and yet, that's the most popular one. That's yeah. the class of things that people are going for. That's very Why isn't there a visual then? It's just too hard to do. Videos, are, I, I couldn't do it five days a week. It's just, it's just too much. Oh, sometimes he doesn't have the... <laughs> and, it's, and it really does not add... It really it would add a little bit when Pierre goes to the board, but for the most part, it's not worth all the extra gigabytes. I see. I got you. Yeah. But if it's getting the most hits... Well, well, I, I have a full-time job. I, I can't do it. <coughs> I can't manage it. Uh, Yanni did video for a while, and when I get to posting those, they will definitely go up in their format. But since you're getting so many I think the you know, David has actually suggested some of the teaching tools that are out there are things like, uh, he was researched it for a while, the things that teachers use that sort of have a camera over the page and the person, the teacher can write, and you can see what they're writing. As they're writing. As they're writing. It's still essentially audio, but you do get to see the page as they're writing. That would be a great tool. I would be open to something like that. But I don't want to get into video, videoing the whole group. Yeah, I think anyway, I just thought it was neat that before we give it yeah. back to the, the, the hardest, most, if you want to, we use it loosely late, lately here, but I would say anagogic of the studies is really the Parmenides. And it's hard, and it's so fruitful. And that's what people are going for. Do people, get, so to, awesome. do people get to comment? Yes, they can add, if you, you, if you create it? yourself a free uh, account on there, you can, and Julie has done it, and one other person from Australia, you can you can put comments at the bottom of any item. Do you know And you can add it as a favorite. Do you know who is listening? Do you have that kind of tracking? Um, if you go to the main web page and click on About, you'll see our info, and down to the lower right, it shows you uh, what countries at least are coming in, or yeah. states in the United States. And, I was asking Pierre because one of the states that I would not have guessed is Virginia. Oh, oh. We're getting, that's second only to California. It's a, it's a big mm. classic state. Everybody in Virginia has to take Latin. Mm. It's yeah. in every school. And mm. there's a Neoplatonist Institute there, and, and, right? Yeah, and there's a... Uh, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's right, international. Yeah, it's one, it's Texas and, Lat and, and Virginia are the two highest. What about well, Nashville? I mean, they have the Parm Parthenon and yeah. all. No, I'm they, half joking. They have country music, which is... Almost as good. Almost as good. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe people like seeing the struggle of <laughs> that, that we go through in, in Parmenides. It's very human, <laughs> for sure. It, it is could, a real. Could advertise <laughs> if you want more people to know this. Like on, on Facebook, you know, you can target different regions of the country, no. a different age group. That's just I know. It's <laughs> worth more spending. I like I'm the fact. Like I like yes, what's going on. But I suggest you. Why? I heard a thing on. NPR recently, they were showing like Swedish or Norwegian TV and they called it slow TV. And they said what it really was is the true reality TV. Like you might watch guys fishing for six hours. Or hours. <laughs> oh my goodness. And they're like, and by the way, it took them three hours to even land the first one. <laughs> they had they watched a cruise sail from here to there and it took 12 hours. Yeah, or it's and a train's like, journey that's like 24 hours like, or something. You know, the question was, is this like a, you know, a, Norwegian, Swedish kind of anomaly, or, or are people really into this? And the guy there is like, it's possible it is, but it shows real people doing real things. Not, mm -hmm. it's not a an act, you know, like what we call reality TV is a script, and you just kind of want yeah, it's whatever they want you to see, not like what really happened. So How interesting. I mean, I was thinking TV? maybe that's something like with these tapes, like that's that really happened. It wasn't yeah. people acting. We really saw people confused. Yeah, right? <laughs> really? We really saw people not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> or we saw people really getting it. Yeah. That's yeah. We saw, yeah. 
Well, it makes me think They're like crying. with the rise of social media, we have so much ability to put out images of ourselves that people are getting sick of that. It's like eating oh. too much cotton candy, you know, oh. or ice cream. You're like, yeah, I'm not. I live in an ice cream shop, and after living there for a couple years now, we're like, man, I could really use an orange. You know, like <laughs> something with some substance. Reminds uh, me of uh, what you're talking about, Josh. Reminds me of Andy Warhol's famous phrase: uh, "In the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes." Right? Yeah. Now it's even shorter, but everybody, right? right. <laughs> That's the filthy. Hey, look, I'm a superstar right, right now. I'm, I'm. This is worth no kidding, capturing right? forever. And taking pictures of their food and everything when they're out. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm eating. I don't get that. But ultimately, I I'm not that <laughs> it returns, it returns to our earlier discussion. This is where you're going back to this. Okay. Is, is you can only handle enough candy, and after a while, you want some nutrition, and people are going back to meaning. Right? Okay, that was fun. Now can we get back to our regularly scheduled programming? Back to evolution. Tomorrow we're doing the Parmenides. Uh, ah. No, no, tomorrow is what? Sunday. Sunday. No, no, Monday. You don't want to do it tomorrow? No. Here? What about the Republic? Is that... Oh, yeah. Public. What about that? That's Friday night. Friday night, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to write um, on Friday You can know. certainly use my place if you want to do the Republic, too. I will have students coming to that because oh. they've been reading the Republic. Good. Now, we have to do the Balboa. That's fine. They're going to want to come. <laughs> otherwise, it's not worth You're it. You're waiting on uh, Once one I one tell one them that they're reading the Republic. Has the first book been published yet? Is it? Could I, I save them and I put them on in the? Yeah, on January twenty eighth. She mailed them. He can speak to that. Let me let me just uh, quickly. Um, Maria did CC me and included all ten books. Uh, I wrote her back. I, I don't have Microsoft Windows, so I use a Linux version, uh, poor man's version called LibreOffice. LibreOffice does a very good job of pulling in Microsoft Office files, but the Balboas do these gorgeous diagrams, right? Um, and that's vector graphics, it's called. And LibreOffice does not do a great job of translating the vector graphics, as some of you may have noted. So what I usually do is I ask somebody who has Microsoft Windows, and sometimes I ask the Balboas, and I say... I have a worldly right. sentimental to me last night. So if anybody... And so I asked Maria, I wrote her back and said, okay, first of all, would you like to pack those all into one book and paginate the whole thing from one to the end and also do it... She's, she has put them together for me before and given them to me as a PDF. So I asked her, I haven't gotten an answer back, but when she does, I promise you all I will. In fact, I'll, I'll do that later today. And <coughs> once that's back, in the <coughs> I'll put the single new version up on the archive and maybe tell yeah. Barbara and, if you post, and Barbara yeah. can announce. And I'll post it. My technology ability goes about as far as a toaster, <laughs> which means I only use Apple. Will all that stuff come up on Apple? As a PDF, Okay. Yeah, it come needs to be saved as a PDF because yeah, and it comes up on Microsoft, awesome but Microsoft. unfortunately, I so I I'm sorry that was a skip I a skip I <laughs> it's a skip okay. skip. Um, okay, let me. I always translate to PDF before posting on the archive. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Let me raise a point about the Republic. All right, mm -hmm. here's the thesis: the Republic is incomplete. Ah. Yeah. yeah. In order to complete it, you have to take each of the mysteries he leaves, and a mystery is something that he says that is incomplete. That's what I'm calling a mystery. Though it is completely sound in the way in which he expresses it, there is no explanation of what he means. And the only way you can discover what he means is by going into the Parmenides. And the time is. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. You've been saying that for quite a long time. And not the thing. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's the way we're gonna. That's what we're gonna have to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. When is this all happening? Well, I have Friday. I uh, Friday. Cool. I have I have something though. I wanted to. Oh well. What? Oh, uh, I wanted to go back and, and we, uh, it sounds like we're wrapping up. But I wanted to ask a previous question. Um, that you were saying like there's a lot of awakening of people being able to talk about things, like you know, with this administration and um, the women's movement, all these different activities. So, is, so my question is: Is there a way, or what 
leads up to that where people can talk about difficult topics such as you know the you know the women's issues or being able to like uh, if individual or as a group a person is able to accept learning I guess or able to talk about a difficult thing yes talking about difficult things <coughs> I think uh, my view of education is you have to teach a mystery, not answers. Well, like, uh, why are you here? Good question. I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> That's another mystery, huh? Oh, well, what are you going to do with that mystery? Well, I guess I kind of know. What do you mean you're kind of know? But I don't quite know yet. Does that make sense? Well, what, is it, what is it that you know kind of know? Uh, I guess maybe the kind of know, know is the part that I'm figuring out and I, uh, I'm curious about what it is I'm piecing together. Maybe that's still the mystery that I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I'd I like to know more or unpack, unpack it more. Of what? Of uh, maybe different perspective. Of what? Uh, oh, of uh, the real of what? The, the nugget, huh? Of what? Well, I guess from what we've been talking about, maybe of trying to get in to know the self and the mind. Maybe. Yes. No, not maybe, but yes, getting to know the mind. Oh, why? From from our discussions, it's uh, that our our being, our physical being, and as we and as we are all experiencing, you know, we are aging, and then we seem to have this this mind that seems to make sense when oh. we talk about it. Uh, <laughs> if, if it makes sense, what does it make sense of? Many things, many things like well, uh, world. bubble gum and 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 doorknobs. <laughs> oh, I'd like to go right to the heart. Right to the heart. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> I like you said, <coughs> put me in line too. Of our crazy making in the world and trying to make sense of what is important. But, but, but what is important? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What is important? Now look here. Would it be worth having a teacher lead a discussion exactly like you just went through and what you just went through as a, as a way of teaching? Mm -hmm. yes. At what age would you do that? Very, very beginning. Oh, I would say. You mean you'd invite people in into the mystery in the beginning of it all? Mm -hmm. Yes. What would that do to education? If, as the education we have now, I, I would say, it most likely, it would kind of crumble. <laughs> Draw up a schedule for me, okay, of a new school based upon that principle <laughs> and put into it a couple of things that you think it might might be important to study as a result of this reflection you just had. Okay. okay. That's a promise, right? He's going to do that. Uh, when, that do you, when do you think you're going to finish? <laughs> By next week? No. Well, before next week. <laughs> Even okay. better. Maybe, maybe I'll simplify it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, you should be ready tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. By Friday, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> you <went on> Friday. <laughs> Thank you. That's a, right? But uh, Sam, yeah. you work with uh, 
because we're on tape, I won't mention where, but you do work very nicely with uh, young people. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in their teens, right? They're in their teens. And early cool. 20s. Uh, and they come into your, we'll call it a community center. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have varying problems, uh, but uh, they all are looking to improve their lives. Yeah. And you've also been a summer camp counselor in an earlier incarnation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that there are opportunities that you've had already for, well, some of the conversations you've already played back for me that seem to indicate that you you, you often question them in a way which, which they like. You're subversive. Huh? You're a subversive. <laughs> Well, I but that's what it, that's what education yeah. is. It's yeah. subversive. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't. I guess I don't understand that word. But I don't. Good. I don't grade them. I, I just let them discover and figure things out through the arts that, that the assignment that I give them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I let them share. And uh, even though if it's wrong or not wrong, but yeah. it, whatever they do. It's not right or wrong. It's their discovery. Yeah. I, I wanted to share something regarding women and um, you know, the awakening of women. And I had this uh, experience, I won't go into the experience, but the inside out of it, um, came, I wrote uh, just a note on it that and you guys may have seen it, but going back to the book of Genesis, um, we have um, God saying, do not eat of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And you have the snake uh, saying, uh, no, it's okay. And uh, you will not die. Mm -hmm. So it occurred to me that um, the tree of knowledge, um, in the way we're talking about it, was being uh, prevented by the, uh, in other words, that would be using her mind. When she ate of, the knowledge, of that knowledge, then she would be entering mind. Mm -hmm. And so God, this particular kind of God, um, said, don't do that. And that has been um, carried on for centuries, millenniums. And the other aspect is that um, you're not supposed to eat of the tree of life as well, because that would make you like the divine. And it would occur to me that that was the very struggle, at least in the, my history and listening to many midwife talks, that um, there is a punishment for being in that state, being in the eating of the tree of knowledge, if you want, or being in the state of uh, being close to the divine. And so uh, I thought about that, and I said, wow, that has a long history, and it makes a lot of sense why it is that I have a lot of difficulties, but also other people's struggles. And I'm thinking now that with the women's movement and what I see with their coming out is to say that, um, no, it's okay to have mind and not to be submissive and to agree with the oppression of whatever people are talking about or saying that, you know, you have to go along and do what I tell you to do. And so I thought I'd share that that it has its origins way back when, at least that part of it. Labels and stigmatisms that go along with it. And Sunday school. And Sunday school, and it's continued and perpetuated. And hmm. oh. Pierre. No? What is the problem? You're shaking your head, so. Well, no, that's an interesting selective reading, but it doesn't deal with the text. Hmm. It doesn't? No. Oh, okay. 
then um, I shouldn't have shared it then. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, don't you want to hear why he says that? No. no. Aren't we all here to share this? I, like I already it. did. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, people do a lot of things. Yeah. As they're reading. But that story is different. It is not true what the text said, you know. I mean, if you say to the text, it's much more interesting. Uh, only Adam is exiled, but he is not exiled as a punishment because he is told to go to the place from which he was born and tend the garden. Mm -hmm. Eve is not exiled from the garden of Eve. Hmm. Only Adam. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem with the story is that she's left there in the garden of Eden with a tree of life. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Hmm. Good question. I don't uh, know. In other words, you can stay with this. If you wanted to stay with the story, mm -hmm. it's different than, than commonly understood. Mm -hmm. And uh, look what God says. You know. The problem is now, at least He put forth His hand and reap for the tree of life and become like one of us. That kind of God is worried about mankind becoming like like the divine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not my favorite kind. That's right. Or not my kind. Have you guys ever read? Um, so, as a way of, of trying to understand something within that kind of a, a system, mm. has its built-in difficulties. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, have, you guys, have you guys ever heard of Zechariah Sitchin, the author? Nope. The, uh, that whole story, uh, maybe I should, maybe I should write it up and bring it in. Yeah, I think you'd be fascinated. The, uh, they used to think that the cities mentioned in the Bible never existed. Of course, over the last hundred years, they've dug up many of these out in, in the desert, in the Middle East. And what they've also uncovered is um, these libraries or storehouses of uh, over now, over one million clay tablets from what we call Samaria, but I guess the real name is Schumer. And these clay tablets have a lot of uh, trade and transaction detail, but they also have historical information. And what they've uncovered in the cuneiform that's on these tablets is that the Sumerians, some 4,000 years before the Christian Judaic tradition, had the same story about Adam and Eve. And it's much, much more fleshed out. What we got is the Eater's Digest. It's called the Gilgamesh Epic. It's called the what? Gilgamesh Epic. Ah, uh, oh, Gilgamesh, yeah. Hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, it was during the, the, the Jewish captivity when they were exiled to. Uh, this, is, this is different. Yeah, well, it's, it's that. That's later. That's later, but nonetheless, it's continues the same tradition. Yeah, a lot of this stuff has been... So, the, the Sumerian version of this story yeah. explains, answers uh, so many of the questions that we have in the Old Testament that don't make any sense. That every that every Sunday school kid has has questions of, like, how can Cain and Abel, how can Cain slay Abel, then go out and marry another woman? How's, you know, how's that possible if, they're the, if Adam and Eve were the first, right? because we got this incredibly stupidly digested story. Uh, it also explains why God's is plural in Genesis, still problematically plural, right? It's all plural. Yeah. Right? 
Well, the Sumerian version explains we're not, we're dealing with divinity, we're dealing with what we call the gods, but they were quite infallible, and they were definitely not divine. And it's a quite fascinating... Quite infallible question. or quite fallible? They're quite fallible. Mm -hmm. uh, fallible. And gods are not divine? What we call the gods. I'll, I'll, I'll do a short write-up on it, and you guys can read it. His, he's written many books on it. He just passed away a few years ago. He was a world expert on the cuneiform. Of those million, <coughs> of those million tablets that we have, only about 50,000 have been uh, translated. Uh, it's absolutely fat. It's like a time capsule, and it, it gives us an early history of the human race, which, uh, which has been hidden up until now until just recently. And it's quite clear that it's really not worth working from the Old Testament because that is such a bastardization <clears throat> of the original history. Uh, it's, it's not worth using that text. Um, we were clearly given what someone else's agenda was for us to, to read. And therefore it doesn't make sense. That's right. It has all these problems. It's fascinating. Bring it well, I have a question here. You're saying that I didn't read the text. Did God actually say, "Please do not eat, do not eat of the tree of knowledge and of good and evil"? That wasn't written in the well, text. I don't think that's the point I was making. The point is the issue was the tree of life. Well, I didn't add that to my discussion at that point, but I don't mind adding that to my discussion because that was the experience that I did have, and I, that's what took me off into the idea of tree of knowledge, and I thought that was an interesting kind of state, that that would be something that was told not to get into it. Is there are many ways of people dealing with that text. Well, you're saying many ways. Did he say not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? If that's the case, then he is saying don't do that. If I'm reading it, that's how I read it. So is that there? Pardon me. I'm pointing out that the issue in that story is the tree of life, not the tree of knowledge, good and evil. I understand that, but I'm asking, does he say don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Once she does, and therefore they have awoken, and the next one is, well, we have to do something because they, uh, we do not wish to have them eat or they will mm -hmm. become like us. That's the tree of life. But I'm asking, did he say don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? And what is your opinion? It's not an opinion. Is that what he says? Well, why don't you answer it? I'd say yes. I'm asking you. You're, you're hey, saying that, hey. therefore, I don't know how to read it. And I'm going, okay, well, then, if I don't know hey, how to read it, is hey, it there? There are a lot of problems in that if one wants to read the book. Okay. Is please. it there? Is that what he says about to eat to them? that they're not supposed to do this. Is that what they're saying? What is your opinion? My opinion? I just read it. It says don't do it. So where's, why are you asking me? Well, what is the point in it that so heavy on you? <coughs> I'm being very selective. And therefore, it was a heavy criticism. Because I, I'll tell you, I have a nice experience about please. the Bible. No, not please. It's enough. I, I, I've tried my best. To, I, I shared something. Now, suddenly I'm not reading it correctly. I, didn't, I told you already that I wasn't going to share the whole experience. But I don't mind if it makes it clearer for everybody. But it certainly was an interesting idea that some authority figure is saying, don't do this. Which is mind. Don't practice mind. Why are you, why are you getting upset about something? This is something. <coughs> because you were insulting. You, That's why. And I don't like being insulted all the time. 
So I said, hey, man, hey, I can sit here right. and feel bad, or I can say something, hey. and I'm saying something. Hey. You invited my, my criticism. Don't invite me to criticism if you don't Why like criticize it. that way? Come on, you could have said something like, hey, there, yes, that's what he says, but that's not all that he says. And furthermore, the whole idea of punishment is difficult to maintain in terms of that story. I would agree there. There isn't any punishment directly. It just has a don't eat of the tree of knowledge. You don't ask me what I think after you've said something when you think I disagree with it because you have too much difficulty understanding. Oh, me. now I have difficulty understanding, so thank you very much. Well, you're pretty good this morning with words. Gina, are these for friends? They were for um, oh, Mary. Okay, and, okay. Did you and want to take some? You're welcome to take some. You can take some. Go for it, Ag. Go for it. Take tangerines, as many as you want. In fact, I don't want any of them. Is this from your house? Yeah, I just picked them this morning. They're just not washed. Organic pesticide free. So unwashed. That's on you. Does but anybody want any popcorn? Yeah. Yeah, thank okay. you so much for your time this morning. Pleasure. Really thank enjoyed. you. We'll right. see you on Monday. Yes. Okay. Thanks, <clears throat> Pierre. Unless I work. <laughs> I'll I do might some have to work. studying here. Yeah. yeah. Is that your house? Book. No, it's at uh in the house. But I gotta see love and beauty and wisdom and all it all relates. Thanks, Gina, for the oranges. And truth and, and yes. Uh, Thank you, sir. There are twelve for the oranges, Gina. Sure. They're gonna help a lot. No problem. You can come by and get them. Oh, it's cold. Oh, okay. It would be good if you asked for David. Anybody want this stuff? Oh, okay. I thought you might want to keep them for Monday.